Then, that was amazing. That was beautiful. You have such good one-liners also. Like that just sends it in there. This is what it's all about, is passing on the tradition, passing it on to the next generation. Thank you for being a link in the chain. This is what it's all about. Did we're a couple days, that's right. We're, we're a couple days away from probably the greatest day of the entire year. <laughs> Purim is also one of the greatest days of the year. And Kippur is also one of the greatest days of the year. This day of the year, one of the great rabbis said, his name was Yossi. He says, if it wasn't for this day of Kabbalah Satoira, if it wasn't for this great day of receiving the Torah, that we stood at Mount Sinai and God spoke to us, and we all had national revelation, and He gave us the guidebook for life. So me, Yossi, I'd just be like any other Joe in the marketplace. There's a lot of Joes out there, you know, hanging out, playing backgammon, do whatever people do, just like in the shook. And I'd just be a regular guy. Thank God that I elevated myself through Torah. Thank God I'm not just a wandering person in this world. I locked into the purpose, the crystallized purpose of reality, which is Torah. So we're speaking about the meaning of the Jewish prayers now. And one of the prayers that we're focused on is the prayer of Torah. And I want to just focus on something here. V'rachamecho Hashem Elokeinu God, your compassion V'chasodecha harabim In your amazing kindness Al yazvunu Never will it leave us Never, you're never going to leave us Ever You're never going to leave us And even if it seems Like you're not here It's your amazing compassion in disguise Because I know that the more that I learn Torah, the more I'm going to see that you're with me every single second. Mamish. You never left me. You never left me. You never will leave me. Ever. You're not going to leave me in this world. You're not going to leave me in the world to come. And then we say three words. Netzach, Sela, Va'ed. Each one of these words, you know what they mean? Forever. 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 In case it wasn't clear, Forever. You're never going to leave us. Each one of these words separately, netzach, means forever. When somebody says, sela, sela means forever. Va'ed, forever. Three, the three terms which refer to forever mamish, that God will never leave that compassion for us forever. And we're, we're, we're confirming that now. And my entry point into that is Tyra. You ever notice you go on the streets and you ask me, like, how you doing? The guy's like, sorry to say it's such language. Sucks. Bro, like, what's wrong? Like, there's so much to be thankful for. And now it's not good. It's not, not doing good. Not doing good. Without Tyra, a person, it's so easy to just feel abandoned. Torah is the place where you will enter a world and the more Torah you learn I know, God, you never left me and you never will leave me, ever. Netzach Selah Va'ed That's very good therapy. You can help a patient know that and God is with you, He's been with you and He'll never abandon you. And look at the next part. Maher Ve'haveo Leinu Fast Hashem, bring us Bracha v'shalom, bring us. God, we want blessing. We want to know this. We want the blessing of the Torah. Meheira, me'arba kanfais kol ha'aretz. Bring us from the four corners of the globe. I feel like we have the four corners of the globe in this room right now. The Yidna coming home. Bring us home and also bring us blessing from the four corners of the globe. It's an interesting language. Bring us blessing and peace from the four corners of the globe. By the way, what we do during Shema, anybody know during this time when we say this? What do we do? We grab the four corners of the globe 
we pull all the four directions of the world together with our four sides of tzitzis and we unify them. What we're essentially doing is we're bringing the blessing back, all the blessing back. We're unifying all the blessing back because what do we want to do with all the blessing? Financial blessing, spiritual blessing, health, all the emotional wealth, balance, peace. What do we want to do with that blessing? By yacht, we want to build God his home. We want to build yeshivas. I always think, what would Reb Noyach Weinberg do with a billion dollars? So he built a kingdom with a few million dollars, a shatera. What would he do with a billion dollars? There's people out there with a number of billion dollars. What are they doing with their money? What do I build a palace to talk about God's wisdom? You think that's a good legacy to leave? Now, Bezos, you could like throw a couple bill to build up the destiny of God wisdom in the world. It would be good for his eternal life if he did it. People have billions of dollars. What are they doing with the money? Or <coughs> well, they're just hoarding it? They're just... Well, the yacht for 500 million. 500 million dollars a yacht? That's what it goes for nowadays? That's not like it was a big... That's nothing. I think it's the biggest in the world. Nachman says. The biggest in the world? Nach Leukes. Two Jews, three opinions? So, for what? Now, if you tell me you're making a yacht to do a Kirov trip and talk about God's wisdom on the boat... And then, and maybe you like take, uh, you know, children that are sick, low aleinu, and give them very special experiences, and 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 you use it for for spreading the wisdom of Hashem because it becomes a real educational experience. So then, maybe there's something to talk about. But if you're just going just to like drink with your boys, I don't know if that's using the money wisely. And after 120 years. Someone's, every single one of us is going to have to answer to Hashem. We should all live long, 120 years. B'zrat Hashem, Amen. We're all going to have to answer to God how we used our money. Every penny of it, by the way. Now, not too big of a bug out, but a, big, but a bug out enough is, see, Meyer talks about this, just, just to get the perspective. Because we don't like to think about this stuff, but it's very important that we do at least a little bit to sober us up. In the year 1902, the entire world population, every single human being on the planet from 1902, there's not one person today that's alive. The entire world as it existed in 1902 is completely gone, every last person. means we seem to have this feel like oh we're just like all going to kind of be here well we will be but not in this form and the form that we'll be in will all be dependent on the decisions that we made in this world so in this blessing here we're saying Hashem bring blessing from the four corners of the globe and we're unifying it all together to build you something great and it goes on. Ushvar uleinu me'al tzavareinu. This is very strong. And Hashem break off the exile. All the evil nations that have made problems for the Jew over the last thousands of years, that, that yoke of oppression should be broken off. Because what is the Jew's message for the world, the pure, undiluted message for the world? We want to see world peace for all of humanity. And we want to see God's wisdom spread through the whole world. Just like water covers the sea, we want to see God's word spreading to the whole world. That's the undiluted message of the Jew. And anybody who's stopping that, we want to say, Hashem, once and for all, just stop, take off the chains. It's holding back that wisdom from exploding to the whole world. And bring us back to the land. And we'll end with this. Hashem, bring us back to the land. The land means the land of Israel. 
Come amuse. Bring us back standing up. Now, why do we have to add that in? Bring us back standing up. Like, what would have been the other option? Bring us back standing up. So the Gemara says in Ksubis, something very, very powerful based on the Hasim Seifer. If you look up the Gemara in Ksubis, Kufiyad Aleph Hamid Aleph, that it says in the end of days that everyone will come back. The resurrection will happen here in the land of Israel, the resurrection of the dead. Those that are buried outside the land will come back through special portals in the earth. That sounds wild. Just open up other Kabbalistic materials and you'll see interesting things. Underground tunnels of sorts. Now, it may mean something physical, but likely it means something spiritual. And the bodies will come back. They'll sort of roll through these tunnels back to the land of Israel and they have the resurrection. Which means, how will they come back to the land? Lying down. We're telling Hashem, bring us back to the land standing up. Meaning we're all coming back to the land in the end of days. <laughs> but I don't want to have to come back to the land in these underground rolling tunnels. I'd prefer to come back to the land comamuse, standing up proud. But we're also saying, I don't want to just be standing up and proud outside the land of Israel. Bring me back to the land of Israel standing up proud with the vision of bringing Hashem back to the world. Mitzvah Shem tomorrow is going to be our last day before Shavuos. We're finishing this blessing. We'll finish it tomorrow with the help of Hashem. We should be Zorich HaMamish today. That Mashiach come today to have a Beis HaMikdosh and this Shavuos to bring the, the Oilus Zvachim and to have a big party with God in the Beis HaMikdosh. Amen. Call to have a wonderful day. The is going to be right here. Right there. Yeah. The property value of this place is going to skyrocket. Hey, Shantayra. The greatest real estate